Foundation models that you can use are of two types. Either they are closed models such as GPT-4. You can use them but we know almost nothing about them. Or they are open models in which case they release detailed descriptions of data, model architecture and training configuration. But there is almost no information about the process which resulted in this exact model. Apple has done something which you will never expect out of them. They have released this paper with detailed descriptions of the process that they followed when creating the MM1 paper. This will be a great resource for teams which are working on training multimodal large language models. Hi, my name is Jaydeep and in this video, we are going to go through the paper MM1 Methods Analysis and Insights from Multimodal LLM Pre-Training. Welcome to my channel. Let's go through the abstract. In this work, we discuss building performant multimodal large language models. In particular, we study the importance of various architecture components and data choices. Through careful and comprehensive ablations of the image encoder, the visual language encoder and various pre-training data choices, we identified several crucial design lessons. For example, we demonstrate that for large scale multimodal pre-training, using a careful mix of image captioning, caption, interleaved image text and text only data is crucial for achieving state of the art few short results across multiple benchmarks compared to other published pre-training results. Further, we show that the image encoder together with image resolution and image token count has substantial impact while vision language connector design is of comparatively negligible importance. By scaling up the presented CP, we build MM1, a family of multi-model models up to 30 billion parameters consisting of both dense and mixture of expert variants that are SOTA in pre-training metrics and achieving competitive performance after supervised fine-tuning on a range of established multi-model benchmarks. Thanks to large-scale pre-training, MM1 enjoys appealing properties such as enhanced in-context learning and multi-image reasoning enabling few short chain of thought prompting. Uh, so interesting points here. One is they checked uh, various ablations across image encoders, vision language encoder and pre-training data choices. So they trained 30 billion models across both dense models and mixture of export variants. Uh, for evolution, they used in context learning and few short chain of thought prompting. So next we go through some of the examples that they mentioned as the output. So if you see here, the bear, smartphone and teddy bear. So you, as, a, as a few short prompt example, uh, they gave a bear and said that, okay, smartphone is there, teddy bear is there, hair cat is three. So some kind of counting the main points, main images. So cat, there are three cats here. There are three books here, one vase and one glass. There are two, so what, what is the output of this? So it's saying that there are two dogs and one frisbee, so quite good. Red circle, no parking anytime. So showing that only, only see what is there in the red circle. Red circle, red hello. Red circle, you, St. Paul. So what is red, red circle, Hyde Park? So in, in, interesting values here, so MM1 can perform in-context predictions thanks to its large-scale multi-model pre-training. This allows MM1 to count objects and follow custom formatting, refer to parts of the images and perform OCR, demonstrate common sense of word, word knowledge about everyday objects and perform basic math functions. So last one is basic math functions. So basically 1 plus 3 is 4. Similarly, 6 plus 4 where here is 4 is 10 so 4 so what what is the output of 4 plus 1 so answer is 5 so interesting results here more examples mm1 can follow instructions and reason across images example and this one uh, from villa 
will I answers correctly when prompted with chain or thought prompt so even photo photo is given a menu is given given how much should I pay for all the bear beer on the table according to the price on the menu so here there is an example so uh, shown is beer prices it is uh, which specific beers are on the table however I can provide you with an estimate so to so so an explanation of the data is there for pre-training data they use three different types of pre-training data so there is image caption interleaved image uh, text and text only data uh, so for few so important point is for few short and text only performance interleaved and text only training data is of paramount importance while for zero short performance caption data matters the most so this is also an interesting point we demonstrate that these trends hold across uh, supervised fine tuning as well both on evolutions used in the pre-training as well as on further benchmarks they also train various uh, LLM uh, 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 models ranging from 3 billion to 30 billion and uh, by exploring mixture of expert models so what is the mixture of expert models for this we can go to this hugging face blog So, uh, MOE model has two parts, basically the sparse MOE layers and the gate router, gate network or router. So, sparse MOE layers are used instead of dense feed forward network layers. So, in a normal um, uh, attention model, there is the self retention, normalize, uh, switching FFN layer and the add and normalize layer. So, instead of all of these, you have... Uh, the attention and the normalize is there but instead of the FFM layer you have routers and then you have multiple FFM layers uh, so either one of these will be activated and then you have the add and normalize to get the output so illustration of the switch transformer encoder block we replace the dense feed forward uh, FFM layer present in the transformer with a sparse switch FFM layer this layer operates independently on the tokens, uh, token sequence. So that's why we have the sparse MOE layer. MOE layers have a certain number of experts, but each expert is a neural network. In practice, the experts are FFNs, but they can also be more complex networks or even an MOE itself, leading to hierarchical MOEs. A gate network or router is the second. So the router part is this one. Gate uh, that determines which tokens are sent to which export. For example, in the image below, the token more is sent to the second export and the token parameters is sent to the first network. So more is this router sends to second network, but the parameters is sent to the first network. As we'll explore. In practice, uh, they can send a token to more than one export and the, but the router basically decides that and the router is composed of learned parameters and is pre-trained at the same time as the rest of the network. So let's go to the next one. Here there is related works where they consider uh, other models and other architectures as well. So recipe for building MM1. Since uh, uh, training or rather uh, finding the best architecture uh, across 2 billion and 7 billion models or 30 billion models will be very difficult and time consuming. Uh, they use a smaller variation um, to find what, what is the best configuration. So exploring three major axes of design decisions um, in the architecture, in the data and in the training procedure. So here is an explanation. Model ablations, what visual encoder to use, uh, how to feed rich visual data and how to connect the visual representation to the LLM. So these are the three major questions uh, that is being explored as part of these experiments. 
how they did it is uh, modify one component one component at a time a either an architectural module or a data source and assess the impact of the design choice for each of these components so along these three uh, dimensions uh, when looking at the image encoder a vision transformer large for the 14 uh, patch model trained on with a clip loss on dfn 5 billion and we kept 300 million with images of 336 cross 336 a vision language connector a c abstractor with 144 image tokens uh, for pre-training data a mix of uh, captioned images 45 percent interleaved images uh, image text documents 45 percent and text only 10 percent data for a language model 1.2 billion transformer decoder only language model is used um, for evolution zero shot and few shot uh, performance on a variety of visual question answering and captioning tasks uh, are done evolution is done on these uh, values so this is the vision uh, transformer large patch 14 uh, quite a lot of downloads this is a very popular model uh, so the clip model so this is the basic clip model was developed by uh, researchers at OpenAI uh, the base model uses a VIT large uh, 14 transformer architecture as an image encoder and mass self attention transformer as text decoder so basically an image to text uh, model mm, here you can see the code and how to use it model was trained on publicly available image caption data so pre-existing image data sets such as YFCC 100 million so what is the clip loss the clip loss aims to maximize the cosine similarity between image and text embeddings for the n genuine pairs in the batch while minimizing the cosine similarity for the n square and correct pairings so that is how the clip is trained next they go uh, they use a vision language connector uh, which is a c abstractor with 144 image tokens this is based on the honeybee uh, paper uh, honeybee locality enhanced projector for multimodal llm so if we go through this paper paper uh, here you can see um, in recent study lava utilizes a two layer mlp instead of a single layer linear projection for enhancing the vision language connectors representation power um, this approach led to an investigation of how varying the number of mlp layers impacts overall performance so they use something called c and d abstractors uh, to achieve uh, good benchmark scores so what are the c and d abstractor uh, so C abstractor has convolution layers and adaptive average pooling uh, in the projector. Uh, there are three convolution blocks, ResNet bottleneck block with squeeze excitation, convex block and a standard convolution block which is three cross three convolution layer. So this is the C abstractor. For the D abstractor uh, is uh, there are 2D reference points, 2D sampling offsets and attention weights. Uh, so this is an uh, attention layer that is used. In case of uh, the Apple, uh, the MM1 paper, you can see a C abstractor is used with 144 image tokens. From a pre-training data perspective, a mix of captioned images and 45% uh, and interleaved image text documents 45% and text only 10% data is used. In the case of language model, a 1.2 billion transformer decoder only language model is used. Okay, going into the next one. So here the results and all are written. So from a loss point of view, contrastive and reconstruction losses are used. So important point is image resolution has the highest impact followed by model size and training data composition. So uh, if you see here, 
uh, increasing image resolution from 224 to 336 uh, resulted in 3 percent boost increasing the model size from vision transformer large to vision transformer high uh, uh, that is doubling in uh, parameters resulted in modest performance increase of 1 percent while uh, adding uh, vcap 300 million a data set of synthetic captions yield more than one percent boost in few shot scenarios uh, when it comes to model type the results are less conclusive contrastive methods tend to result in higher performance than reconstructive uh, methods so what is contrastive loss this blog has a nice explanation for it link is in the description so going through we have two inputs input one input two which goes through the network uh, networks and uh, these networks have the weights and then we have the features and all which goes through the loss function to get the loss value so in contrastive loss uh, it takes the output of the network for a positive example and calculates its distance to an example of the same class and contrast that with the distance to negative samples said another way the loss is low if uh, positive samples are encoded to similar representations and negative examples are encoded to different or further representations. So you, the formula is here. This is the formula negative log, log of uh, uh, taking the similarity of the ith uh, 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 value uh, with the jth value uh, given by the temperature and you take the exponential with the ith and the kth and all other uh, values essentially so you can see the contrastive loss looks very much like the softmax function uh, similarly what is the autoregressive uh, image what is the autoregressive image modeling so here uh, and for the task of so it's similar to language generation uh, where the autoregressive models work on images by modeling the likelihood of a pixel given all previous ones. You can see given all of these ones, it, it tries to predict what is xi. Uh, this is the conditional probability that happens where xi given x1, x1 to xi minus 1. So generally autoregressive model over high dimensional data x factor, the joint distribution as the following product of conditionals. So these are the two kinds of losses uh, that were tried when uh, when testing for this model. Okay, moving on. So the vision language connector and image resolution. Uh, the when testing for it, it uh, the goal of the component, the goal of this uh, uh, connector is to translate the visual representation to the space of the LLMs. Encoder is either a single embedding or a set of grid arranged embeddings corresponding to the input image patches but you need these image tokens need to be converted to sequential one of the LLM hence there are uh, um, so hence a challenge basically comes up on one side we, li we would like to capture as much detail from the image as possible uh, fulfilled by increasing the number of image token embeddings and on the other on, on the other side uh, in case of multi image input having a large number of input tokens per image is computationally challenging so hence uh, they tried uh, with different uh, uh, configurations uh, either 64 or 144 tokens to represent the image as well as different image resolutions 224 and 336 so for this uh, different architectural options are considered so there is average pooling where uh, n cross n average pooling on the output of the vit image encoder is applied followed by a linear projection of either n or uh, 12 attention uh, pooling motivated by the fact that image token representations are in a different space than and then llm uh, input embeddings attention pooling using k learnable queries uh, is applied so different different keys uh, are also uh, um, applied either 64 or 144 uh, and then also convolutional mapping is also uh, applied uh, based on the honeybee example that we saw 
the C abstractor is applied. So that is implemented as a ResNet block. So from the connector, uh, what they understood is that number of visual tokens and image resolution matters the most, while the type of the VL connector has little effect. So this was done using zero shot and few shot performance um, um, from the data ablation point of view. So they use different data uh, different data set for pre-training multimodal learn. So this these sources, so caption images uh, as well as synthetic also interleaved. And so these were the size of the different data that was used. So. So from the data, uh, different lessons were gathered. Uh, data lesson one is interleaved data is instrumental for few short and text only performance while captioning data uh, gives boost to zero shot performance. So that is one interesting result. Uh, lesson two, text only data helps with few short and text only performance. And uh, uh, lesson 3 is careful mixture of image and text data can yield optimal multimodal performance and retain <coughs> strong text performance. So they saw that a caption interleaved and text ratio of 5 is to 5 is to 1 was achieved uh, with a, strong, a good balance of strong multimodal uh, performance while still keeping comparable text only understanding. So I think 30. Uh, 45 45 uh, so caption and interleave 45 percent 45 percent and 10 percent is the text ra ratio that is uh, taken into account uh, synthetic data helps with few short learning so same amount of synthetic data should also be used that also helps with the uh, uh, specifically in few short learning as well so after all these ablation studies, the final model and training recipe that was found is that in case of image encoder, the vision transformer, uh, huge model with 378 uh, pixel resolution uh, when pre-trained with uh, the clip objective um, uh, works uh, best. Uh, in case of vision language uh, connector, 144 tokens is used and C abstractor is used. Uh, in case of data, uh, in order to maintain both zero and few shot, 45% interleaved image text documents, 45 image text pair documents and 10% text only documents are used. So this was uh, what was used for the final model. So uh, once the model configuration is found, they, they trained uh, multiple uh, models, 3 billion, 7 billion and 30 billion parameters. Uh, 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 the LLMs were trained in-house on the same text-only data set. Uh, so these were there. Uh, 16 images per sequence of 378 cross 378 with a batch size of 512 sequences. And uh, it was trained using the AXLearn framework. So this is the XLearn library for deep learning. Uh, the link is there in the paper and we'll share it in the uh, description as well. So XLearn is a library built on top of JAX and XLA to support the development of large scale deep learning models. XLearn takes an object oriented approach to software engineering challenges. So uh, it is basically for um, um, uh, uh, distributed learning essentially mainly for hundreds of billions for big models and distributed learning. It, it adopts a global computation paradigm to allow users to describe computation on a virtual global computer rather than a per accelerated basis. So it, it basically follows the global computation paradigm. Although I feel that this, this uh, library is not uh, mature enough for more uh, open uh, usage in case of model scaling for the llm uh, since it's difficult to do at it at the full scale so a grid search uh, is done on 9 million 85 million and 302 million and 1.2 billion uh, uh, llm model uh, on the learning rate and then basically a linear 
regression is fitted on the on the data that is found and on that value an optimal peak learning rate is found so for 30 billion model it, it finds this as the you know, learning rate so that is what they trained it with and uh, uh, scaling weight decay by peak learning rate of worked well for all models uh, another scaling was done using mixture of experts so either uh, top two gating mechanism with for 64 or 32 experts per sparse layer and replacing that with a dense uh, replacing the dense layer with a sparse layer every two or four layers so to convert the dense model to mixture of expert we only so they only replace the dense language decoder with a moe language decoder uh, so these are the sp parameters uh, comparing with flamingo m emu Okay, once the once the model is pre-trained uh, to evaluate, they did uh, supervised fine tuning. So fine tuning was done uh, following Lava 1.5 and Lava Next, uh, 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 the way uh, the, those models were trained, and uh, uh, roughly one million SFT examples from diverse set of data sets was used. So these data sets was used. So we can understand how LAVA training is done based on this uh, blog post, uh, link is in the uh, description. So LAVA training encompasses two essential stages that enhance its capacity to comprehend user both language and visual. So pre-training is done for visual alignment. In the initial stage LAVA assign, uh, aligns visual and to ensure compatibility and fine tuning end to end is done. So based on the this the SFT results we they got all these uh, values in which the chat or the fine tune models were showing good performance. So that's that's the overall of the paper. There after after the references as well there are various nice uh, points. Just going over the. Yeah, so how, how the how the interleaving of the image text data is done, it's it's similar to Obelix. So here the documents, so constructing a, doc, a data set of 500 million interleaved image text documents containing 1 billion images and 500 billion text tokens. So these documents are built from 3 billion HTML files. Uh, from each HTML file, text body layer and image text are uh, gathered. So documents that so uh, they remove documents that have no images or more than 30 images then uh, why more images because uh, the um, the text in the the uh, text that is there will not be relevant for those images if there are too many images so then they download the images and insert them in the original positions so after that image filtering and image deduplication to remove low quality and repetitive images are done so that's an interesting way of uh, creating your data set for text only data an initial web corpus of 150 billion english html files uh, and then some boilerplate removal to arrive at html representing the main content is done so this is also nice so you can see the contribution of the different uh, data sets So this one how how the visual uh, instruction tuning is done is uh, based on lava and lava next to encourage the model to provide long form detailed responses and perform conversations uh, they use the gpt4 data for model training we also experimented with lion for multi-model understanding capability a variety of academic task oriented multi-model data sets are used so these are similar to lava and the lava uh, next frameworks so these different different data sets are used for sft 
so for uh, in sft the batch size and uh, or rather for the mm1 models are pre-trained with batch size of 512 and decoder sequence length of 4096 uh, around 16 images per input sequence as used with each image resulting in 144 tokens as we discussed previously learning rate scheduling is done using standard cosine learning rate decay schedule with an initial linear warm-up of 2000 steps the learning rate is then decayed to 10% of its peak value over the course of uh, uh, around uh, 20,000 training steps. So norm of 1, gradient clipping with max norm of 1 and Adam uh, written optimizer is implemented. So for 30 billion model, another Z loss term with a scale of 1 uh, e to the power minus 4 is also used. So this, this is shown to improve training stability. So grid searches on the learning rate and weight, uh, weight decay is done. So here are the results for the mm1 predict count the number of apples 7 is able to there are 3 oranges it's able to understand so what are all the scene text in the image So more more examples are shown here. So interesting point here is another uh, common scenario where explanation of the flowchart is there. On that note, I also have a YouTube short uh, for explaining and converting a flowchart to code. Uh, link will be in the description. So you can go through these examples. So that's that's the overall of the M1 paper. Uh, quite a nice paper in terms of the different methodologies that are used. Um, you can you can take this. This is basically a, you can also take this up or rather consider this like a survey paper as well to understand what are the different ways you can design your own multi-model training.